Hello. So in this video, we're, we're going to talk about Rona Monroe's play, Iron. Now, I've read a number of Rona Monroe plays before, and I really genuinely like her as a playwright. But this is probably my least favorite of the plays that I've read. So, you know, it's probably actually a bad first Rona Monroe play to do a video about. But that being said, it's actually not a bad play. It's a good play, it's just not the kind of play that I personally am drawn to. Um, so Iron is a prison play, and it's a psychological family drama. Um, it centers around a woman named Faye, who is, uh, who's got life in prison for murdering her husband, and her daughter, Josie, who reconnects with her after 15 years. So Faye's been in prison for 15 years without having seen Josie, um, and Josie now sort of comes back. And they reconnect, and memory is one of the central ideas here, or the central themes of this play, because Faye is reluctant to remember what's happened. Like, even when Josie says, I talked to a solicitor, which is what they call lawyers in Britain, um, I talked to a solicitor and, and they think that we can get you out, we would just have to go back over all of the evidence and you would have to tell your side of the story. Faye is extremely reluctant to do this because she doesn't want to go back over the events that that sent her to prison she simply isn't she simply isn't interested in that uh, in those memories but Josie also has a memory component to her character in that before a about age 11 she she can't remember anything she's just blocked everything out and so one of the things that Josie is trying to do in reconnecting with her mother is to recover some of those memories of her childhood prior to her, her father being murdered. And actually, as the play goes on, Josie, more and more memories surface for Josie, but she's unable to remember her father for most of the play. Um, while this is going on, they become progressively closer and closer, and there's a, a big suggestion, especially from one of the prison guards, a prison guard who herself had gotten very close to Faye um, before, um, before being sort of tricked. Uh, and it's not 100% clear whether this is uh, sort of objectively the case that Faye manipulated this prison guard or whether it's the guard's perception or whatever it is. But especially in light of that storyline, there's an implication that Faye is manipulating Josie for her own reasons, whether that's just to get contraband like uh, tranquilizers and things like that into the prison, or whether there's some sort of deeper psychological reason for for this manipulation is unclear. And also whether or not it's actually happening or whether or not Faye is genuinely trying to make a connection with her daughter is all unclear. But one of the things that happens is that um, Josie essentially Toward the end of play, Josie has essentially decided that she's going to give, functionally give up her life to try and get Faye out of prison. Um, Josie says, I'm going to get you out. And Faye says, you're not. You're not. You're going to get me paperwork and memories that make my head bleed. All I want is for you to take me dancing with you. That's all I've got. All I've got now is your life. You're squashing your life down till it's no bigger than my cell. And Josie says, good, then I'll fit in beside you and we'll never be alone again. Neither of us will. So in terms of what Faye means there, she's been trying to get Josie to go out and do things and have a good time and meet people and go to bars and things like this. 
and then basically come back and tell Faye about this so that Faye can sort of have these vicarious experiences. And part of that is genuinely about a sort of desire to vicariously live through her daughter, but part of it also seems to be genuinely about a desire to picture Josie having a good life. So there's there does there seems to be a selfish component of I, a person in prison, want these experiences that I can't have, and so I want you to give them to me. But there's also a selfless component in that it's I want you, my daughter, this person for that that in a in a major way I've let down in life. I want you to experience a good life. I don't want you to suffer in the way that I'm suffering. So I think Faye is a very complex and dynamic and interesting character. And Josie is a complex and dynamic and interesting character because she is she is willing to give up her own life, her job. Uh, she doesn't have that much of a social life, but she's willing to give that up as well in order to try and build this connection with her mother. And then the thing that sort of breaks this, Faye is unwilling. So first off, it doesn't seem like Faye really wants to get out of prison. Like she does say that she, she says that she does, but she also refuses to participate in any of Josie's attempts to actually get her out of prison. So it seems like this is the place that she wants to be. This is the place she's comfortable. She knows the routines, etc., etc. And that's actually, quite, as I understand it, quite a common phenomenon with people who've spent long periods of time incarcerated. Uh, if you've ever watched The Shawshank Redemption, this is a this is a major theme of that movie is that people get institutionalized and they're they're unwilling or in, unable to function outside of the routines and the norms of prison life but um it also seems like Faye ultimately sort of recognizes that she's not she would not be a positive influence on her daughter's life if she was out of prison. So she sort of breaks the relationship off and she does it in a very psychologically violent way because she effectively recounts the murder of Josie's father. She, she recounts killing her dad and the first thing that she does is actually tell Josie how much he loved her. Like she gives him the, er, she gives Josie these scenes of them together, of Josie and her, her dad together. And they're all these positive scenes about how much he loved her and wanted to be around her. And then Faye tells us the story of this murder. And throughout the play, we've gotten these sort of implications that maybe Josie's dad was abusive, physically abusive. And so there's some sense that maybe Faye could get out of prison if it was self-defense or something like this. But she tells this story where basically they had had a fight and he got over it and she was consumed with rage and when he fell asleep she stabbed him in the chest because basically because she was consumed with rage about this fight and he had moved on he had been able to laugh at the comics and the papers or the sports pages or whatever it was and so for that reason she killed him and this is, this is sort of the thing is, is her, that's her attempt to drive Josie away to say, no, I'm not the person that you thought I was. I'm, I am guilty. I did kill him in, and there wasn't a justification really. There wasn't a rationale. I wasn't defending myself or something like that. 
Um, so I, I think ultimately the sort of ethos of the play is summed up by Faye's line about a third of the way through where she says, there's no one can hurt you like the one you love, is there? 